Right, we've got a light that's got 10 of these bulbs in. It's a Philips uh, G4 12 volt, um, 20 watt, well actually 2 watts equal 20 watt, warmish white um, bulbs in. And the, the light was originally supplied with 10 uh, ordinary 10 watt um, filament bulbs, you know, tungsten filament bulbs, so 100 watts versus 20 watts with this in. So I upgraded it and um, put the bulbs in, but now, of course, it's too bright. It's alright for me, but other people, particularly my wife, says, Yeah, too bright. I, my potatoes look funny, it's too bright, and my son likes to eat in the dark as well for some reason. So um, I thought, okay, well, I'll make it dimmable, um, being knowing a little bit about electronics. Thought, okay, well, they should be able to dim these bulbs. But you can't. Um, they've got uh, their smart power supplies inside. I'll show you what, what I've done, but I'm just going to demonstrate to you um, the fact that um, the non dimmable ones cannot be dimmed, but there is a hack we can do to make them dimmable. Um, because this bulb is also available in a dimmable form, but it's about twice the price. So the non dimmable ones, two or three pounds each. And the dimmable ones, five or six pounds each. And of course, if I went to buy ten for my light, I'd be paying an extra forty or fifty, sixty quid to get the bulbs to go in the thing just because they're dimmable. So I thought, what can I do to make it dimmable? So I'm going to wire this up now. What I've got have got here is one of these LED controller boxes, um, and it's just a PWM twelve volt controller touch panel. They're very common, and um, I've used these on a on a few lights before and it's a PWM so I'm going to rig this up and just show you how the waveforms work on the scope and then I'll show you what the hack is to actually make this from a non dimmable into a dimmable uh, light and we'll go over the schematic and the circuit diagram with the chip in it that shows you uh, exactly what's going on alright so I'm just going to wind this up and I'll be back in a moment well so here's this thing here's the instruction booklet look uh, it's a single channel one so that's only hasn't got the colour and it's 4 amps, 12 volts to 24 volts, so it's 12 volts, 24 volts, 4 amps, straightforward wiring, yep, okay. So the power goes in here, got DC power input, 12, 24 volts, and then the output V+, plus. and because this is a single channel one, I think they've commoned up all the negative channels, so this goes off to your LED bulb, okay, and this is your input voltage, right, so I'm just going to wire that up, if, if, if you look at the front of this, um, you can see, I think that's the standard spacing for the UK wall plate, so it should go in the UK wall plate, and then this front panel with the touch sensor on, touch sensor IC and the ribbon cable, with the touch panel on the front, clips over the top once it's on. There's nothing to lock it, it's just uh, spring clips, just the uh, dogs that clip under there to lock it into position, okay. So that's that feels feels like glass, actually. If it isn't glass, it's bloody tough actually, because it's not scratchable. Yeah, so there we are. Okay, so we'll take this out of the packet. the old two pin uh, connections um, plus and minus I think there's a bridge rectifier inside there so plus and minus has no meaning so this should in theory run okay from AC as well I don't know if that's true we'll try it in a little while and see so I'm just going to wire this wire up to there you plus onto that one lots of yummy things all of the yummy persuasion Mm, that was the wife delivering a bowl of yummy things. Look at that. See, electronics and yummy things mixed together. Move those wires out of the way. Yeah. Cornbread toast, crisps, hummus, tomatoes, tzatziki, salsa, and chorizo flash fried with honey and balsamic vinegar in the frying pan, and then some cheese. Very nice indeed, I shall enjoy that at my leisure. Back to the main video.
Okay. Okay, so we've got the capsule bulb connected across the LED and they're both connected to the same power supply. They're not in series or anything, so they're absolutely in par parallel. So you'll see how a filament bulb will respond to this dimmer compared to the non-dimmable Philips LED capsule bulb. Right, so if I just turn it on, you can see on the scope, um, if I turn that down a bit more, you can see on the scope you've maybe got 10-15% um, due to cycle and the capsule bulb is responding accordingly. It's dim, right, it's just glowing. Whereas the Philips bulb is near near to full brightness already, okay? So if we just turn the dimmer up, see the capsule bulb respond, the capsule sold is now bright, but the brightness of the LED bulb hasn't changed. And we go all the way around here, if I can make it go, this is really, I wouldn't recommend these dimmer switches to be honest. I think it's lost its calibration. Let's turn it off. And I'll try again. There you go. So, we're now running at something like 90% duty cycle. The capsule bulb is glowing nice and brightly. The, the Philips bulb is unchanged. The LED hasn't changed hardly at all. And if I just turn it back down again, you can see we've got the faintest of glows in there. It is just glowing, uh, only just. If I cover that up, you might be able to see it. There's a very faint glow. But the Philips bulb is at full brightness still, so the dimming is just not working, alright? So let's investigate this bulb and see how and why it's doing what it's doing, okay? And if it can be hacked to make it dimmable. So I'm going to turn that off now, and then I'll reconvene with macro on and we'll take the thing apart. Well, here she is, the old Philips bulb. Turn around, China export mark. ROHS, uh, don't disposal, must be recycled mark. 2 watts, 2,700 degrees Kelvin, light, black body temperature, for equivalent radiation, which it isn't really, um, 200 lumens, 12 volts, 290 milliamps, 50 or 60 hertz, made in China. Okay, so if we just pull this apart, <clears throat> that's interesting, isn't it? It's just got, you'd think there'd be two... It would radiate this way, light this way and that way and leave a, a dark spot around this side. But let's have a look at this. Let's put this back on. As we slide that back over, you can suddenly see the light emitting parts of the diodes, which means that light will shine in this direction. So there will be a bit of a dull spot here, but it's mitigated somewhat by the design of this lens. It's not quite 100%, but it's a good effort, I suppose, for a cheap bulb. Actually, they're not that cheap, are they? So let's whip those off there. What have we got? We've got two LEDs in parallel. Yeah, they're in parallel. So there's four LEDs in series parallel. Okay, they're in parallel and they're in parallel. So we pull the controller out. Ease out. What have we got? All right. So um, right, we have a peer what what appears to be an LED drive chip, which happens to be a buck regulator type design. You've got the rectifier. It's just an ordinary inductor for the uh, for the buck regulator for the LED drive. Presumably some setting resistors to set the actual <coughs> drive current. So if you wanted to reduce the power, you could mess about with those settings. And what looks like a standard LED drive chip. I'm just going to... Oh, there's the rectifier up there. Okay, I'm just going to quickly uh, cut the video and just sketch this out and then come back. Won't be a moment. Right, so this is what we've got. We've got a bridge rectifier on the board. We've got a smoothing capacitor to even out the uneven power coming in and to store charge and power to give a nice smooth DC power uh, input to the V in on the control chip. A small decoupling capacitor there. I'm not sure that's on our board. I've cobbled this circuit together from a bunch of uh, circuits from a data sheet. We've got our buck uh, in inductor up here and the switching output from the chip, rectifier diode, um, and these two resistors. All right, so there's resistor one to resistor two, a form a potential divider of the output um, voltage on the diodes themselves, on the LEDs, and comes back into here. And by changing the ratio of the two resistors, you can effectively, effectively change the drive voltage for the LEDs. Okay, so. Um, 
you can see by whatever power you put in here, whether it's AC or DC, it will always be arranged by this bridge rectifier that, so that there's a positive voltage on this smoothing capacitor. Right? So in our PWM, when it's, um, we have a short pulse, a short pulse I'm driving this, a high current pulse goes through down through this diode and charges this capacitor up um, very quickly with a sufficient charge bear in mind we're running at about 1.9 kilohertz wasn't it it's um it's a sufficient charge to to um hold this and to make this led think it's running from a straightforward dc power supply okay so the our problem is that this capacitor is storing the the um power between our pwm pulse as we saw on the scope and this is just running from straightforward dc power so therefore this voltage is not changing and um, so we're not getting any dimming okay so what we could try um, there is actually an enable input on here which we could link through the wire to the correct terminal on there but um, it's clearly the chips only enabled that would switch the chip on and off in between the PWM pulses so you still have your charge being stored on here from the um, on the reservoir capacitor but you could switch this line using the power line um, PWM pulse so basically this would only be enabled during the PWM pulse that is one possibility the problem is that um, unless there is a good load across this then the logic levels coming in here are going to be pretty undefined undefined actually with the other all the other bulbs i've got 10 bulbs on my system all parallel and the switching voltage on there probably wouldn't be very clean from the power lines we'd need some kind of signal conditioning on this to make that switch reliably and to drive the enable input so that our PDO twm is enabling and disabling the uh, the chip the LEDs so we get a PWM control of the LEDs all right so um, that could be made to work but it sounds complicated and it probably is ridden with a few um, problems with noise on the power lines so um, the alternative I'm going to try actually is just to remove this reservoir capacitor on the board I'll show you in a minute it's two capacitors all right but they're just in parallel now I've got a feeling if I remove these, then when there's no power here, i.e. during the inactive part of the PWM cycle, the off space, during the off space, the chip will be powered down, it has no power. And during the on space, it'll just recover quickly and start powering the chip. This is running at 50 kilohertz or something like that, whereas the PWM is only running at 2 kilohertz. So this should fire up and run quite happily when the PWM power is coming in and then when the PWM off cycle work happens this collapses there's no voltage for LEDs so let's just try that out and see if that works okay so just to remind you what it's like um, I've just wired it up again a bit more robustly these pins you just can't solder onto them they're stainless steel I think they even dropped out the Phillips bulb without any encouragement little stainless steel pins they put in and it not really soldered in the Phillips bulb you can just push them and they turn inside the solder joint so shoddy work Phillips I'd say anyway so I've rigged the bulbs up so they're still unaltered unchanged at the moment you can see we've got control of the of the uh, tungsten bulb you can see the timing waveform changing okay still no dimming control for this one so let's just turn this power off uh, I'll turn the power from the power supply off is probably better what I'm going to do you can see I'm just going to zoom in on this for a moment so you can see it so you can see these two caps they're in parallel that's that reservoir capacitor on the diagram so what I'm going to do is just snip these out at the moment if I can get my cutters in there, there's one gone
Right, so bye bye capacitors. That's just the reservoir smoothing capacitor in there. So if we go back out to normal view, there we go. And there you have it. So let's turn the power back on. Okay, oh, look at that. There you go. So, um, bright, dimmer, dimmer, dimmer. Dimmer, dimmer. Yeah, that's working. Look at that, it's working. If I just fixed um, the exposure on this thing, let's go spot meter focus, let's go exposure auto, we'll go manual, turn the exposure right down here somewhere. All right, so that's better. You can see more of the dimming. So we've got a very dim, um, warm, dim glow from these. I'll put my finger there so you can see a bit better. And if I turn it up, it's dimming. Okay, to remove all those capacitors, simple hack. Just pull it out, slice those two capacitors out, and you change a a cheap non-dimming Philips um, what model are these? These are G4s. You can turn a Philips G4 non-dimming into a dimming G4 by removing those two caps, okay? And then it will it will dim from a PWM power supply as you can see there. Alright, that is actually quite dim to the eye, you can't minimum and then up there is very bright. It's not really um, showing properly on the camera, but that is dimming fine. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you're interested in uh, videos like this, and if you could subscribe, that will help to uh, reward me for <laughs> time spent. But I'm just going to go and hack all my bulbs and put them up. So, yeah, that was good. That saved me buying another 50 quid's worth of bulbs to dim the, uh, the dining room light. Um, I hope you found that interesting, and uh, take care. Enjoy. Bye.